about the unsustainability of, uh, of uh, Greece is like the Pope talking about virginity. That is, uh, I mean, the, the uh, IMF has implemented all these austerity measures and it's been behind these austerity measures. And what we're seeing now is that the IMF is kind of criticizing austerity in order to put the blame on the EU because the IMF wants the EU to take over the whole debt load of Greece. The IMF is a banker's organization that would never never uh, ever uh, uh, go without collecting its uh, its money. And it is within the uh, contracts of the IMF that a country always has to pay back the IMF before it pays back any other debtor. So the IMF will collect its money at the moment. The IMF is kind of in a, in a, in a, a strange position because uh, it is trying to put the blame on the EU. It's trying to, to get the whole load of, of debt on, onto the EU. And for that reason, it has kind of uh, uh, gone out and, and uh, done this double speak thing about, uh, yes, we're sorry, uh, uh, austerity might not be the, the, the right solution for all these problems. I mean, the IMF will demand austerity wherever it turns up in the future. Definitely. <laughs> Well, the problem is the nation states, you know, no, no national state can actually resist the, the, the IMF's policies uh, successfully. It's absolutely impossible because you can see that in Greece. I mean, as soon as Syriza was elected and everybody thought that they might uh, oppose the, the IMF, the IMF stopped, uh, helped uh, through the Troika together with the EU and the ECB. They stopped all emergency loans uh, from the EF, ECB to Greece. So they, they brought the, the government of Greece to its knees. And that's what they always do. As soon as, uh, as any, any government in the world opposes the IMF, it is go going to be brought down. You can see that in Greece even, even before the uh, Syriza took over, <clears throat> because when Papandreou, the ex-prime minister, when he uh, asked for a vote on austerity, you know, he, he, he had to quit his job three days later. And that was at the behest of the IMF and the EU and the ECB. So these people actually control governments. They are more powerful than governments in this world. The world is actually ruled by the financial industry. And the most important instruments of the financial industry are the Federal Reserve, the Bank for International Settlements, the IMF, and uh, the, the World Bank. Those are the most important uh, organizations in international finance at the moment. <music> The big problem for all of us is that time is running out, that this uh, system is uh, into its uh, final stages and uh, nobody knows when it's going to crash. It's going to crash someday. And uh, the biggest problem is that uh, before uh, the, the system crashes, uh, the uh, people in power might decide to go to war because a war always helps the, the financial industry. Uh, the, if, if, they, if the U.S. Uh, a started a war against Russia and implemented a government like the government of Yatsenyuk and Poroshenko in Ukraine, that would save capitalism maybe for another five or ten years. If they started a war against China, the same thing might happen, because Wall Street would take over all of, all of China. So, so we're really faced by some very, very big threats, and all we can do at the moment is actually inform people about how important the financial system is. Because uh, uh, the media, uh, which are controlled by the financial industry, Uh, make people believe that the financial industry is just uh, something that they don't understand and something that doesn't really affect their day-to-day -day lives. We have to tell people that the financial system is the most important part of, the, of, of everybody's life right, right now because the financial system, the goings-on in the financial system decide whether we have a job, how high our living standards is, whether we are taken care of when we're sick, whether we are taken care of when we're old, and even... If we're, whether we live at peace or at war. That's all decided by the financial industry. So the most important thing, I think, at the moment is to inform as many people as possible about these, uh, these uh, uh, structural things about the financial system. The media make you believe that, that uh, if the, the stock exchange goes up, it's good for the people, but it's not good for the people, it's good for the 1%. The stock exchange is completely manipulated by central banks and by hedge funds these days. And they, they uh, collect a lot of money by, by uh, driving the, the uh, stocks up and down. They, they can even make a lot of money by stocks going down these days. If you, if you uh, short uh, shares, for example, you can make a lot of money if, if a share goes downhill. So uh, all these things are controlled by the financial industry and the media make the people believe that it's good for them if, uh, if the, the stock exchange is at, at new record levels. But it's not good for them because the, the dark side of it 
is that a lot of people lose their jobs in order to, to make production cheaper, that job flexibility is implemented everywhere, so that jobs are not what they used to be, like eight, working eight hours a day, but working at night, working, uh, working uh, during your holidays, and uh, having, having to work during all hours of the day. So uh, life for people is becoming more difficult. But we are actually at a point where this system is no longer sustainable in the long run. And the time is running out because uh, a war is threatening. So what we have to do and what we have to put all our, our strength into is inform people and get as many people to understand the financial system. Because without understanding the financial system, you cannot understand the world. 